Vantage Point with True North Wealth Partners is for our clients and those wanting to learn more about what's really going on within the markets and economy, as well as overall financial planning topics. Well, welcome everyone uh, to Vantage Point with True North Wealth Partners. Uh, it's Monday, March 15th, 2021. And I'm Andy Smith. Eric Susie. <laughs> yep, here we are again. And here we go. St. Patty's Day, right around the corner. That's right. Get your shamrock shakes out. Woo! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so what's new? What's going on? Well, let's see. Uh, a lot over the past month since our last episode. So we definitely uh, made the changes and rebalances and things that were necessary at the prudent time, right before all the the plungery that occurred, the little pullback. Um with that said, let's maybe start in the uh, the COVID just to sort of give an update on that. You can see, folks, the uh, uh, the spike up that we had uh, for the United States. It went up, obviously. Pretty much all countries went up. Then we went down over the past month and a half here, which is great. You can see it's go back down. But then, obviously, right now we're seeing a spike in Europe. So uh, you know, I think you mentioned earlier uh, Italy had a lockdown or things of that nature. So um, there's still issues and flare ups and Hopefully, uh, the worst is behind us. You might have a little flare-ups here and there, but uh, the economy is reopening, thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, spring is here, woo yeah. and uh, and uh, things are, are looking better. So that's what we were talking about earlier. The show goes on. The show goes on! And we will continue uh, uh, unleashing uh, GDP growth and consumer spending growth, which is good for all. That's right, yeah. Yeah, in fact, they're saying that... Uh, as of uh, March 9th, that uh, COVID cases have plummeted 73%. Uh, COVID-19 deaths declined by 54%, while hospitalizations down 71%. Wow. That's, so, yeah. That's big. Big, big numbers, big, big drops. So big improvements. Good that's yeah. good. That's only with almost 18, only 18% 18 of the population being vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So there's Perfect. probably other factors going on that will lead to mm -hmm. herd immunity, I imagine, too. But that's good. Yeah. Well, end of uh, by May or end of May, herd immunity, I believe, is what we're hearing. So, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know how. To, I don't know how they just. I know. <laughs> is there a you know, is it like the flag goes up? Goes up. We've reached it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they just know that, but yeah. But that's uh, overall <laughs> though. That's you know, uh, as people get get it and just by getting sick by itself and then yeah. not getting the shots, uh, you do build up build up the resistance. So we're getting there, folks. So uh, things are. We're plugging along. Yep. Um, I guess basically, I want to talk about I, you know, the QQQ, the Nasdaqs, the things that did well. I call it ten companies that really propped up the market last year. Uh, it's the K-shaped economy of recovery. <laughs> um, with that said, finally the unwind, and that's what Andy and I we spoke about. So we're back to reality, finally, <laughs> which is good. Um, so the broadening of the asset classes, broadening of the base. Uh, as an example, and you'll see this, uh, basically on uh, March 8th, uh, you know, there was a 10% correction in the NASDAQ, i.e. QQQ. Um, it was the eighth fastest correction. So it only took 15 days from the all-time highs down to a, over a 10% loss. That's a, it was just a correction. So uh, it's 15th, um, uh, 15 days, and that's the eighth fastest ever, which you'll see here, which is... Uh, um, good. He, it's painful to see it, but we talked about, you know, mm -hmm. the S and P having, um, pullbacks, a pullback is 5%. That happens four and a half times a year. So we almost got to that magic number five, but it's basically it's called a pullback. We had that over the past few weeks in the S and P. Uh, so pullbacks are good. Remember we talked about consolidation. Uh, mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, corrections, not necessarily good, but we had that in the NASDAQ, which was uh, lofty and well-deserved. That bubble had to pop. So that's fine. So now the broadening of other asset classes, everything that we own now is what everybody's getting into. So we're good there. Um, and then uh, for the next leg up. So strap in folks, April, May, it's going to be good. Even, you know, we had a nice March here. Uh, we'll see how it ends at the end of the month. So it's quarter end, a lot of window dressing will go on. So uh, <laughs> I expect that a little pop at the end of the month uh, as well. Overall. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, the, it's good to see the the small mid cap companies doing better. So yeah. that's what we talk about broad based recovery. Or mm -hmm. It's not just the big companies that you want to see. Right. It's the, 
the small businesses, the mid caps, the big lots, the, you know, you, you know, you pick your company, right? right? So you want to see those do well. So that's yes. what we've been seeing, which is good. So. Yep. And the, the travel, you know, that's coming, <laughs> the airlines, all that good stuff. I guess we can just briefly speak about that. So restaurant activity, um, you know, things are opening up. It's really a lot of it is weather driven slash everything else. But uh, you can see here in this chart, you know, it was flat <laughs> the up and then came back down. I've had a nice little spike up the past few weeks. Um, and a little bit of turnover of late, but, uh, um, that too, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll go to new highs. So that's the, uh, I've been doing my part on that. Oh yeah. We, <laughs> we, we've been eating out too much. So you're right. I know what you mean. TSA. So travel. So what the checkpoint there says so about one point, almost 3 million, 1.3 million passengers. So again, almost, uh, you know, not quite the uh, highs in January. That was a holiday uh, traveling, but back to the, you know, holiday type traveling. And that's just going to continue onward. Mm -hmm. So uh, try to get back to the over 2 million per day travel or about 1.3 million per day. So we're, we're, that's looking good too. Mm -hmm. So uh, things are, things are moving. As you can see there, uh, I guess the big, what uh, elephant in the room is the uh, 1.9 trillion. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jeez. That's right. Yeah. Yep. The bailout. The bailout. The, uh, the stimulus money. Uh, yeah. So I guess there's good and bad parts of it. So I guess 10 percent's good and 90 percent's bad. It's pork. <laughs> so uh, that's to sum it up in an easy way. So uh, unfortunately, they just couldn't target uh, who really needed it. So we kids, grandkids, will be bailing out and paying for this for a long, long time to come. Um, some good things, though, you know, Americans, uh, if you're under 75,000 uh, single, you get a $1,400 check. Coming this week, more likely over this week slash weeks to come, uh, one hundred fifty thousand and under. Uh, again, you know, you know married fine uh, jointly uh, mm -hmm. under one hundred fifty, you get uh, one point four k per um, dependent. So um, that's pretty good for the, those folks who need uh, the extended weekly benefits. That's three hundred dollars. So they extended that through the end of August. Yeah, tax free. Yeah, tax free, which is great. Um, that's a good thing. Um, you know, the tax credit, you know, was 2000 and now it's 3000, but it could go up to as high as 3,600, depending on the age of the child. I think it's under seven, uh, versus from seven to 17. So that's mm -hmm. like a break there, but you know, good and bad and all that. But the upshot is, um, you know, tr they're trying to get money to where it really needs to go. But then, like I said, about 90% is pork. And unfortunately, uh, those states who were not in the, uh, a dire strait, uh, uh, you know, got penalized. So they are receiving some money, but a lot less than those states that uh, poorly managed the municipality, city, state, and, and uh, uh, what have you. So the uh, um, their pensions got bailed out. The states got bailed out and all on our back. But uh, I think you have something to talk more about that as far as. Uh, yeah. Our yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look even with COVID in 2020, you know, it's the state uh, revenues or the state uh, uh, balance sheets were only slightly down. Yeah. So <laughs> actually they were down less than 2019 19, yeah. uh, majority of states. So, so, you know, the point is, is, you know, there's 350 billion. They have earmarked for bailing out state and local governments. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is it really needed? Right. So it's yeah. like, you know, you have business, you know, especially now where you have businesses opening up, some didn't, a lot of businesses that didn't even close, right. you know, during the pandemic. And, you know, you're going to flood, you know, you're going to give them a ton of money uh, that, um, yeah. you know, the question, California, California, questions. who doesn't need it? They yeah, have they, a surplus. Right? Actually, we had California in 20, actually ran a surplus. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's like, you know, so what's the, so anyhow, so there's a lot of, uh, yeah. Money going places that are more more politically driven, I think, yep. than, than anything. But yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's it's uh, just the way it is. <laughs> I guess I don't know, but yeah, um, that's beyond our control. We yeah. just do what we got to do: manage and play the game that's in front of us. So you got yeah, so everybody's getting their money, and right. now we just got to spend it, right? You yes, people spend sp go spend the stimulus money. Yes, and, and, <laughs> go and, spend. and you'll see here in the savings rate it brings it right into this. So right now it was real high, you know, over around thirty five percent, spiked back down. Now it's going back up about uh, twenty and a half percent, and um, this is in January. So once all this extra money comes, we'll be probably approaching the thirty percent range again. I bet mm. with all the money. So. Yeah, folks, you can see there'll be plenty of money to um, to use. So uh, please yeah. uh, stimulate the economy to keep it going. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good. To, everybody wants to save money, right? right. I mean, that's what we do. We and pay pressure. down debts, which is good. That's right. But yeah. the government looks at that and says, nah, uh, we don't want you saving it. We want you spending it. Right. <laughs> 
And then along with that, you know, we'll talk about GDP and forecasts, but the federal budget deficit to GDP. So if this is through the end of the year, okay, so you can see, you know, minus 15% of is the federal uh, budget deficit. So that's the highest or the most since, you know, World War II, you know, the 20, 25% range. So that excludes the 1.9 that just got passed and excludes the infrastructure. Yeah, the big of, one, the next the big one. one. Two to four trillion or whatever they're going to mm -hmm. try to squeak through. So yep. um, too much. Uh, we'll see. I mean, yeah, you want to, you know, there's, there's plenty of money that hasn't even been spent. Yeah. Right? So what happens when there's too much money in the economy? Caught inflation. <laughs> well, so, that, so, what, so, a, so even though there's all this good news, right, you got unemployment numbers are going down. You have, you know, people are hopefully you know, going back to work. They're opening things up. Mm -hmm. Earnings reports are good. You've got, yep. you know, the, the engine is kind of chugging away along. So what's, what, what's, you know, you talk about inflation. What's, mm -hmm. so what, ha I mean, can it get, can it be too good too quick? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, it can, Andy. That's a good point. So um, if you, you, we mentioned this before, you know, the show goes on, we're in a quad two. So remember the quads real fast, folks. Quad one, two, three, four. So one and two are good. Three and four are not so good. So we're still in a quad two, which is rising growth for the economy, but you also have rising inflation. So you don't want to get into, you have reinflation slash inflation, which is normal, uh -huh. if as long as it's measured in pace. Uh, but then you have hyperinflation. That's what we're more concerned about. And I hear Yellen and uh, Pal, you know, they're, they're as dovish as can be, but she, oh, we're not worried about the 70s and 80s inflation. That's in the 20, you know, 20% 20 interest rates. We're not there yet. But with all the spending down the road, years to come, watch out. So there's ramifications for all the decisions that are being made today. Um, so there will be a point in time. And then you can also see here, uh, you know, hey, relax. The Fed says it's extinct in, in regards to inflation. So, yeah, there has been no inflation for about over 10 years. It's been, you know, one and a half sub 2% for mm -hmm. 10 years. Okay, the average is around 3%. So we will... Uh, beginning back over, the Fed wants it to run hot, you know, two and a half, three percent. They want it to run hot yeah. for a while. Sure. Um, okay, within reason. So hopefully they can keep that in check. So that's what we're praying, hoping that uh, they can try to do that. Yeah. You know, they're still doing the bond buying, you know, the mortgage backed securities and all that on a monthly basis. So that's still going on. But, uh, you know, we you can mention the, um, uh, the Fed interest rates and uh, what they're trying to do. And you can see here, but interest rates, it's uh, pretty much is you know flat. <laughs> they want to keep it lower for longer, not raise it till beginning of 2024, uh, but eventually bring the zero percent interest rates up to you know 2.5 is the uh, you know longer term trend. They, when you and I spoke about this, mm -hmm. they can't wait till 2023 or 2024. It will be sooner. So 2022, you heard it from us, is uh, they'll probably mm -hmm. start uh, raising rates. Uh, at, at some point, measured slowly. If they sure. raise it too fast, you're going to stall out the economy again, right back into a recession. So yeah. it's, uh, it's all a, uh, you know, a, a very uh, doing the right mixtures of ingredients. <laughs> and then the federal dot plot, these are all the Federal Reserves that get together to do their meetings and forecasts. And you can see, you know, 2020 low, 2021 low, all the dots represent a vote. 2022, you got one person voting to increase it. Uh, in 2023, you know, more people are increasing it. So the whole sure. idea is to get it back to uh, 2.5 over the longer run. But, uh, you know, this, I think, will be changed a lot over the next six, nine months. Uh, sure. Yeah, looking as a projector forecast into the future. Hence, let's talk about the two-year tenure. <laughs> yeah. So we talked about that heading into the year. So, you know, starting out like 0. 0.9 or you know, 1%, let's call it, was a 10-year. So this is the interest rate, right? Yeah, the, the, the yield. This is the yield on the 10-year. 10 years, right. that's a federal government, government note. Government bond, yeah, right, correct. Okay. So this is okay. Yep. So the two-year is short end, 10 years longer end. Um, but uh, with that. Um, and so 10, year, 10 years, you buy it. You hold it for 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So it's a 10-year maturity. 10-year maturity versus okay. a two-year. That's correct. Okay. And um, with that, uh, as of Friday, last Friday, uh, it hit uh, 1.64. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you and I came on saying it will be at least one and a half, probably 1.75, you know, this year, summertime-ish, but it happened pretty much in a month. <laughs> it spiked up. So you can see the spike. That is not good. So that's also what led to the deraveling of the fangs, the 10 stocks, the QQQs. So um, they don't do well in a high, fast rising interest rate environment. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, consumer cyclicals, um, the value-oriented plays, those types of things are, is what's been doing well. The energy, the banking industry, which we have exposure to, mm-hmm. um, are, are doing well. So let's see in the bottom end, the two-year will be held low, flat. That's what the federal is trying to control. The government's trying to control the two-year, the short end of the yield curve. So keep rates low. They can't control the tenure or the longer end of maturity. So that's what the market controls. So that's what's going on. They're anticipating higher. So NDR, one of our research, Ned Davis Research um, Strategic Partners, they, they mentioned uh, 2%. So they see 2% by the end of the year. Uh, Hedgeye uh, sees 1.91% uh, this year. Um, one of our other strategic partners. Uh, so, you know, we're still in the call. There could be a little mixture. It could be a pullback slightly of the 10-year, uh, you know, maybe going back down into the uh, 1.5 range or so. Mm-hmm. But uh, long term, it's still going to be one six, one seven, one eight, probably one mm-hmm. nine uh, over the re- remainder of the summer. So this tells us that people are selling bonds, right? I, They're moving out of bonds, out of the out, yes. of, out of the treasuries. So, mm-hmm. so what that doesn't mean, though, right? Is uh, hey, we just need to go and sell bonds, right? No, that means uh, it means to be in the right types of bonds. Um, and so our clients. So how does that impact our clients, right? So our yep. clients have we have a fund manager, multi sector mm-hmm. bond fund, meaning yep. that. The fund managers can go anywhere they need to in the bond market to get safety and to get return, right? Yep. And right now they're on the short end of the old curve. That's right, and so it's the, and that's why it's important, you know, to, to stay diversified. Right. To you know, even though you see you turn on the news, all oh, bonds bonds are down, bonds you know, or the yields up, and mm-hmm. you know, people selling bonds. It doesn't mean to actually get out of bonds. Right. It just means to make sure you're in the right type, which our clients are, right. and um, and to be a tied in with good managers who right. know what they're doing. Um, and so, yeah. And with that said, yeah, good point, Andy. So, you know, it's the price. Price of the bonds go down, the yield goes up. It's inverse relationships. That's exactly what you were just saying there. And so we do, a, we've lightened up our bond exposure, which is a great call uh, for this year. And then also municipal bonds yeah. because with the bailouts, all the munis uh, got bailed out. So that's why muni bonds were great last week. <laughs> so uh, They're coming back. They're yeah. coming back. So, um, yeah. You know, it's all about owning the right types of bonds and, you know, getting diversified accordingly. So, um, yeah, then we're, uh, you know, we have wage growth. People say, oh, no, there's no wage growth. Man. There's plenty of wage growth, folks. So, um, you know, that's 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 coming around. Um, you have that as well. Uh, we mentioned about uh, housing. Okay. Housing has been on a boom. Starts, permits. Mm-hmm. Okay. March, April. So here we go. This is the prime time. So right now, this is nationwide, the month of supplies of inventory for houses, of averaging about four months uh, worth of supplies. The average is 5.7 months of supply for housing inventory nationwide. Here in greater Columbus, that's, it's like 30 days. I was going to say, yeah. that's way lower than Yeah. That. So you, there's multiple offers. I've had clients, you two, selling houses, and they multiple offers, same day. So, uh, I got yeah. Ten, I got 10 offers on our doghouse on our backyard nice. the other day. I don't know what people <laughs> So, uh, and we mentioned, too, yeah, the time to refi was a couple months ago. So that was the lowest the rates have been and probably will be for probably our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, we'll see mm-hmm. if, it, if that changes. So. If you haven't refied, please refi. This is your, you know, the, the low is already set in, and then rates are just going to go higher. Uh, good, based on the ten years. The ten year rises. The mortgage rates uh, reflect and are driven off the ten year yeah. yield uh, for that. Um, the VIX volatility index that has gone, um, you know, a little spike up back down. That's what we saw the past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's about twenty point seven. So the average is eighteen. Um, so we see it uh, on the call today from our hedge eye. He said 19, so we should hit. Uh, so as the VIX goes down, markets go up. So um, you know, the party continues. Um, <laughs> so you know, that's that consolidation. Now, I will say this. Uh, the NAS, uh, excuse me, the S&P is about 4.7% uh, pullback is what's due right now uh, based on the metrics. So risk ranges is what's coming from hedge eye. Uh, so near term, there could be some choppiness, sure. um, you know, over the next week or two, but then heading into the month end quarter end, you know, I do anticipate a little spike back up. So consolidation, you know, a little bit of a pullback could happen. It's all perfectly normal. It's part of the cycle trends within the, how the markets trade, but this giving you short term versus long term, long term, uh, still great quad two for the f- next few months. We'll lighten up and make ch- changes to the portfolios again in the summertime, like we talked about in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Again, 
fullbacks averages four point five times per year for the S and P. We had basically had almost our first one here, so one down, and three and a half to go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, consumer spending still doing good. Retail and uh, on store is is doing real good. So GDP in general, you know, First Trust, one of our other um, strategic partners. So GDP, they mentioned, you know, last few months. I was 4% is what they anticipated GDP growth rate, gross domestic product. Uh, they just revised that last week because of the uh, spending and stimulus yeah. and all that, that this ha occurred yep. going from four to 6%. So GDP from first trust is now 6% is their guidance. LPL, other firms that we see, uh, they're mentioning 6.5% GDP. So they're raising the forecast. Global yeah. GDP is even higher now as well. So, um, again, yeah, have to spending. Yeah. While, while it's there, the money's there. Um, so that's why we said, you know, we're good for the first half of the year and then we'll make changes as deemed fit on the back half of the year. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. So what's up with Bitcoin? Ah, Bitcoin. I tell you. <laughs> that was it, a big one. It year. was. It was. So uh, <laughs> up, down, up, down. So uh, let's see. I, I, a little birdie told me that someone went out and nibbled a little bit on the Bitcoin That's just right. to get exposure to it. So let's hear. How did yeah, it go? So I did a little experiment just because, you know, we yeah. do from time to time get, you know, clients ask about Bitcoin and, and, you know, our response has always been, well, it's too risky or let's just wait. Let's just see how it plays out. And, and that is true. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would never advise to go out and buy Bitcoin at this point because, you know, like JP Morgan came out, I think Friday there, by the end of the year, there's going to be an ETF mm -hmm. that's or, what a, we're waiting or for. a mutual fund yeah. as Bitcoin in it. Then, then that's a little different. That's, yeah. you know, we can test our, test, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, test of that, test the waters that way. Um, but, you know, I was, I was curious and, right. you know, you know, trying to be on the leading edge of technology mm -hmm. and, you know, what's going on in the investment world, I decided I would t dip my toe into Bitcoin. Um, so I put, I cashed out my entire retirement savings. <laughs> <laughs> and how much is that? Uh, let's see, it was $200. <laughs> Actually, well, I, I told my kids I cashed out their 529. There you plans. go. Nice. <laughs> oh, dad. <laughs> That's right. So I put in, so this was, I think on Saturday, I just, mm -hmm. I got online, I opened up a Robinhood account and <laughs> I, I went on and I took $200 and put it in Bitcoin and Dogecoin. And from the time I opened it to, you know, fund it, I funded the account you, and then I invested. It took me about 10 minutes nice. to fast. do it. Yeah. So you can see my balance. I don't know if you can see that, um, you know, zeroed in about just, I'm down about 20 bucks. Yep. <laughs> so it's volatile. Um, it moves. But Bitcoin, you know, trades 24, seven, 365. Yeah. So like literally if you wake up at 3 a.m. and you want to, you want to check your Bitcoin account, you can check it. And, yes. um, you know, so I saw I haven't, I haven't quite figured out how to sell yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I might be locked in yeah. to it, but but anyhow, but I just thought it would be, yeah. you know, so if uh, our clients ask about it, we have know, someone who's monitoring it. You can call me the Bitcoin expert. <laughs> That's exactly at, right. At, at True North, I guess. <laughs> but um, so it's kind of fun, I guess. But um, now my kids always ask like, hey, what's your Bitcoin? You know, yeah. am I going to, do I have to go to college? <laughs> <laughs> the type thing. But yeah. Um, so we'll see. So, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, you know, but I think, you know, as it becomes more, right. I don't say mainstream, but I guess mainstream as it becomes more, you know, something we're watching and we'll keep an eye on. And if it makes sense to, to get into Bitcoin, once a mutual fund ETF, a vehicle right. that we can get into, because we can't, you can't go to Schwab and buy Bitcoin. Nope. Um, and we already made a play slightly yeah. already on the uh, blockchain, the technology. That's so right. The, the yeah. skeleton backbone. Yep. Some of the tech. Some of the, yeah. In. So yep. we have that in play as a as, as dipping our toes in the water. So yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so we're getting there, but we're so, so yeah. So yeah, slow that's but easy. Kind of, kind of fun. But, yeah. yeah. Good but, job, man. All right. <laughs> so yeah. what? So tip of the month. Oh boy. So tips of the month. There's a lot out there. Um, this is a little interesting. Uh, this is a. Again, um, a blurb come from Hedgeye here. This is the NFL's latest attempt to view um, the boost viewership. So go figure. They're going to spend, the NFL is going to spend $5 million campaign to promote, drum roll, brr, 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 flat girls flag football. Hmm. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. So they want to try to get eyeballs. It's all about eyeballs, viewership. Try to get girls flag football going so girls are more interested so then i see as they get older they'll start watching it with their spouses or whomever and have an interest in it therefore they get 
yeah. your eyeballs watching TV. So I was trying so, to use this to get women. You got it. To, okay. Trying to get right. women to do it. And the NFL viewership fell by 7%. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, right. another one is the average car price. So average car price last year was $35,000 last year. That's unbelievable. Crazy. And the average monthly car payment is $576. So, um, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how these, the car industry and uh, how things are moving around. Uh, within the uh, auto industry. So I have yeah. a chart here. If I can find it. Um, in regards <laughs> here, it is auto sales. So auto sales, um, yeah, you can see here the cash for clunkers. You can sell it in 09, help bring back a spike in auto sales. So right now we're doing about 15.7 million sales, uh, which is which is great. You know, the average is 15.4. So we're exceeding that. That's for auto sales. The mm -hmm. truck sales is doing a 12.3. And the um, average for uh, light truck sales is 8.1. So again, you can just see the on the chart there, a lot of uh, people are buying uh, more trucks than autos, sedans. That's, right. uh, so that's the, uh, you know. Well, you know the number one vehicle seller of all time is, right? What is it? The F-150. Oh, yeah, that's right. I knew that. Ford, Ford, ah, Ford F-150. I knew that. Yep. yep. Yeah, and they're like they're like 60, 50 grand. I know they are. <laughs> they're expensive. They ain't cheap. Yeah. yeah. Gas prices. So what do we say? Hey, go, say goodbye to the dollar. Remember the dollar seventy nine gas prices we saw earlier this year. Oh, <laughs> it was right there. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Now it's uh, it was over three. I paid recently. Uh, dip, dip back down. Uh, so right now the average. This is through March eighth, two seventy seven. Uh, you'll see 350 easily, gas prices, folks. So uh, yeah. strap in. Inflation's here. So um, Take those the, vacations now. Yeah. <laughs> key is yeah. just try to um, uh, do what we can to uh, maneuver within the, the minutia of, of the markets and policies and things that are going on. So um, that is – we covered a lot, threw a lot at you, a lot of charts. There's just a lot of info. Just know, folks, we are watching it all for you, making the, the tweaks to the models. We anticipate another tweak, you know, summertime-ish, mm -hmm. um, as things evolve and change. Enjoy summer. Enjoy your family. It's coming. And, uh, well, springtime first and then yeah. summer. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you. And any Definitely. questions, reach out to us. Uh, other than that, you guys take care. Wash those hands. See ya. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You can reach this episode on our website at mytruenorthwp.com by other podcast venue sites, or by calling us at 614-929-2715. Also, feel free to share this episode with friends and family and sign up for our weekly email market updates via our website. Special thanks to our producer, Nathan, as we will be producing these episodes on a monthly basis. Investment advice offered through Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor, DBA True North Wealth Partners. Investing involves substantial risk. True North Wealth Partners and Stratus Wealth do not make any guarantee or other promise as to any results that may be obtained from this. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. The economic forecast set forth in this material may not develop as predicted, and there can be no guarantee that strategies promoted will be successful. No reader should make any investment decision without first consulting his or her own personal financial advisor and conducting his or her own research and due diligence.